On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a guan. A blessed and wonderful Tuesday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now, my peeps, you don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please, like the video. Share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So watch this now my peeps, we are going to kick it off with a previously mentioned story where this young female presently on your screen said to be 16 years old of a 1A Albion Avenue address over there in the Kingston Western Police Division identified as Bianca Thompson, otherwise known as Abby. Abby's life was taken on Saturday, the 24th of February 2024, sometime around 11.30 p.m. in the night. Abby was at home when criminal elements armed with handguns invaded her home and took her life in a rather horrific manner. Abby got over 20 can all over the upper body and head. Abby's life was taken unjustly so. And as in many circumstances, many knockings and clappings that has resulted in the loss of life of some innocent people, it's simply because Abby was related to a known criminal element. Now, in my last video, when I made mention of this story, I also made mention that Abby has a cousin. I did not mention his name, as on the spot news media is seeking to get some more information as to the person in question. But a member of John Public screenshot parts of the video and posted this on their status. Now, this member of John Public called the name of the criminal element that I am presently investigating. He has since been identified by his alias in the criminal underworld as Manafati. Yeah, man. Now, on your screen, you can see clearly what the member of John Public wrote. Abby Cousin, when named Manafati, makes you dead. Because him set up Squire last year and make Jungle Tap and Angola man them shut up Squire. In the same yard where them go kill Abby, he's an instigator just like Squire. So right there and then, this says a lot to persons living in and around that space who knows what is happening. Now on the spot news media will most definitely continue to do his investigations and will definitely give you a comprehensive follow-up story on this controversial figure identified as Manafati. Yeah man, say in a way, make we continue. Now, a knockings and clappings go on over there in the Cockburn Pen community. That took the life of this man presently on your screen, identified as Akeem Mullins, otherwise known as Speed. The man them yam him food and broke the plate in him car while sparked in the community. Now it is said that his knockings and clappings is sparked from an ongoing gang war in that community. It is said that Akeem, along with another man, was inside that motor vehicle. The man escaped the brutal onslaught. And Akeem life was taken following an argument in the era with known criminal elements. 
Now on the Spot News Media will also give you another update as I seek to ascertain more information surrounding the knockings and clappings that took the life of Akeem aka Speed in the Cockburn Pen community. Yeah man. Now we are gonna move right on into this morning's main story. A story that we have seen happening in Jamaica time and time again. Knockings and clappings and people are ball, weep and a moan and a shout out police excesses, police brutality, the soldier, the murderer, you name it, those are the cries that they have been shouting over the years. Many of us used to buy into it back in the day and point fingers at the security forces, labeling them as murderers, stating that they execute their duties unjustly on the regular members of Jan Public. Now, yesterday was one of such type of scene. In the Flanka community, in the war-torn, crime-riddled, volatile, St. James Police Division, where this man presently on your screen lost his life to the hands of the security forces. He has since been identified as Peter Johnson, but more popularly known in the streets as Jolo. No one the spot news media has in his possession a video of the actual event, well, after the fact, after he lost his life. Some is saying that it is the police. Some is saying that it is soldiers. But information reaching on the spot news media would suggest that it is soldiers that took out this man in a hail of bullets after he fired on them, allegedly so. So now we are going to hear from the residents who stated that this innocent man's life was taken by the country's security forces, this time pointing fingers on the JDF. Then, of course, we are going to hear from the assistant commissioner in charge of the St. James Police Division. Then, on the spot news media, will most definitely get into who this person really is. Peter Johnson, a.k.a. Jolo. Yeah, man. We are for Korea going in a flank right now. Man, they murder a youth. And put gun for him for the big election voting day. You know, so I go on. Big fucking gun. For Korea going here. And they murder the man to blood clot. That's a war zone now. Election mash up a flanker. That's just a police that we didn't go in our hand. Jaja. No, you know say every time I hear people say, watch this a police here with him gun in him hand. Me I wonder what the squad is supposed to have in him hand if the gun where the squad here carry is not a part of him working tool. No, it would have make sense if I say watch that teacher ya or that doctor ya with him gun in him hand. Cause we know say the tools for their trade is not that of a firearm. But anyway, we could get back to the meat of the matter. So the residents are basically crying foul play at the part of the security forces, labeling them as murderers. Stating that the now deceased man identified as Jolo is an innocent man. Now on the spot news media will be reading a statement. An award winning statement I must say by an affiliate, friend, associate of the now deceased, Jolo. I hope that the persons responsible for the funeral of Jolo when it comes will elect this person to write his eulogy. So we are going to read what this resident 
friend of Joel have stated, then of course we are going to get into the meat of the matter. Now in the statement released by this friend of Jolo stated that in the heart of Flanka's Montego Bay, a vibrant yet challenged community, we have seen a profound loss that has deeply affected us all. The passing of Jolo, a young man whose life was unexpectedly cut short in a tragic incident, has left a void in the fabric of the community and in the hearts of those who knew him, including myself. Jolo was a figure of respect and positivity in the neighborhood, someone whose presence was felt and appreciated by many as a friend. I had the privilege of witnessing his kindness and the positive energy he brought into every interaction. Though we weren't inseparable, the moments we shared were enough to understand the depth of his character and the loss we now face. The circumstances surrounding Jolo's departure have stirred a wave of emotions and raised critical questions. It happened amid the heightened tensions of election time, a period when the dynamics between the community and law enforcement can become particularly strained. Flanka, a community often in the spotlight for its economic struggles and resilience, is now united in grief and a quest for answers. The collective response from the community expressing concern and seeking clarity highlights the urgent need for closer examination of the events that led to such a devastating outcome. It's a pognant reminder of the complex relationship between law enforcement and the neighborhoods they serve, especially in areas like Montego Bay, where challenges are many, but the spirit of togetherness prevails. Although my connection with Jolo was not the closest kind, it was marked by mutual respect and shared moments that reflected the quality of his character. His passing is not only a personal loss, but a communal one, urging us to advocate for justice and accountability. As we reflect on Jolo's life and the circumstances of his passing, let us honor his memory by fostering a community that values understanding, justice and peace above all. His legacy, even to those of us who were friends but not in the deepest sense, is a call to action for compassion and change in how we interact with each other and those tasked to protect us. I would say bravo to this statement, an award-winning statement, I must say. Now, let us hear from the Assistant Commissioner of Police, that's Clifford Chambers, that's head of the Era 1 Police Headquarters. He's the man that sits in the high chair. He stated that the man that was fatally taken out by the police and soldiers in flankers was a man that was wanted by the St. James police for serious crimes, including murders and knockings and clappings. So now I want to listen closely to what the assistant commissioner has to say. Listen. Unfortunately, we have an incident at this location where uh, a, a man challenged the security um, personnel and um, based on what the officers what the joint teams were trained to do, they responded and uh, the man was fatally shot and an illegal fire recovered. The person who was shot, I've since learned, is a person of interest and has been the subject of several joint police military operations for a period of time. Uh, he has featured in several shootings and murders in particular space here and the wider St. James Division. So uh, the team executed what they're trained to do and um, we're happy that things are back to normal now 
and that voting has resumed for some time now. In the com has comments have come into the circumstances under which members of security forces, that is the military and police officers, allege that they were in the flankers era when they learned that men in the era had guns. They proceeded to the era and they alleged that they saw the men running and when they chased the men, one particular individual, Peter Johnson, opened fire at them. They returned the fire and when the fire subsided, they discovered that the said man had suffered gunshot wounds. They alleged that they rushed him to the Connor Regional Hospital where he's pronounced dead. This happened at about 1.30 p.m. today. We are in the process of processing the scene and we understand that the members of the military are the concerned soldiers involved in this incident. Now on your screen is the innocent man in question, Peter Johnson, otherwise known as Jolo. Yeah, man. Now, Jolo was featured on On The Spot News Media. Not too recent, but recent enough. He was featured around nine months ago, according to YouTube. If you can look closely beside the amount of views, you will see nine months ago. So this is Jolo presently on your screen. So if you need to understand what took place in that particular video, please go over and watch to get a better understanding of who Jolo is. Jolo is a known and reputed Nakis and Clapis. In fact, Jolo was implicated in the knockings and clappings that took the life of another controversial figure, Tevin Larson, a.k.a. Brocan's father, identified as Clive Larson, presently on your screen. Clive Larson was taken out by the rivals of his stepchild, that is, Brocan rivals. So one of Brocan most controversial rival is a man known as Shartman and it is said that Jolo is a top knackis and clappis associated with Shartman so there is no way that Jolo is indeed an innocent man as is advocated by residents now some of Jolo's criminal element friends have made some posts all over. Now, if this man was an innocent man, look at this post made by a friend of his. A anybody named Carl Panda program there, I go get it. Believe no Kira who one Jolo for life. Yeah, man. And he made that speech and targeted. Danbury music. Try find a plane ticket soon and carry a little follower back of friends. Too switchy switchy. Niam, you know what. Now they are stating that Jolo was set up. Them see him pass with him strap and him other follower as them and made contact with the security forces in the era that armed men are seen close to the polling station. Hence the reaction from the security forces, which started a knockings and clappings between Jolo and the security forces. And that is how Jolo's life was taken. Now they know for sure that Jolo was out and he was out heavily harmed. Hence the reaction of the community and that award-winning speech that was done by a close friend or affiliate of the now deceased. Now, this just goes to show the dynamics of our country and the way of thinking of our people. And sad to say, it has been like this for as long as I know. Jamaicans, love toxic
people love toxic behavior, love toxic mentality. Anyone who is toxic, anyone who is immoral, anyone who will live a dirty kind of boy lifestyle, those are the ones that we as Jamaicans tend to embrace and go up against anyone like myself and like-minded vloggers who stands for truths and rights and the rule of law. We are the persons that the regular members out there advocate against, trying their utmost best to silence us so that their criminal friends can continue to reign supreme. The only time you see them take our side or take a stance is when it comes knocking on their door and then it is most definitely too late. But as always, my peeps, for those who have been following on the Spot News Media for quite some time, knows for sure that when criminal elements get dash away and I come before you and speak about the injustices of these criminal elements, I care zero as to what you want to think of me. So I, on the Spot News Media and other Destiny helpers, will continue our relentless efforts in ridding our country of these criminal elements who are hellbent in creating havoc on a daily basis. Yeah, man. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscasts. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.